Our last reading from The Wilderness Within You, day 47, which is Easter Day, Lent is over. Our reading is from Luke 17, verses 20 to 21, the New International Version, using the alternative within you, given to in your midst. The coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed, nor will people say, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. It's Easter day, and I should be feeling happy. I walk down the steps into the park. That's the way I go to chapel. If you sit in our kitchen, in the right place on the bench by the meal table, you can look out of the back window and see, rising above the dying honeysuckle hedge and in the clear space of blue above the valley with its trees, the pale stone spire of our chapel pointing to heaven. So to get there, we walk along our road, down the concrete steps, then further down still, along the narrow path lined with brambles and sycamores, bindweed and small overhanging trees and shrubs from adjacent gardens. We have to watch our step a bit on that path, because it's where the dogs are let off the lead on their morning walk, sometimes with urgent needs to fulfil. There is a bin, but sometimes. At the end of the path, the land slopes down again to the duck pond. Then the path rises up on the other side of the valley, and our chapel is right there. As I climb the steep path, up the far side of the valley, past the ancient chestnut tree with its scars and nobbles, its spreading branches and sprouting children held close. My heart is heavy. Will I never see him again? I've grown used to seeing that familiar figure, the robe, the sandals, just like I imagined him. Without his stillness, how can I relax? Without his wisdom, how will I know what to do? Without his smile, how will I know not to take myself so seriously? What will be the point of anything without his company? I don't know what to do with the incongruity that I am more comfortable with Good Friday than with Easter Day. For all its unspeakable violence, the day of Jesus on the cross is easier for me to find my way into than the incomprehensibility of Jesus risen. His tears, his pain, his terror, even, dare I confess it, his steep climb of forgiveness. I know these things. I know what they are. But I do not really understand what it means to pass through the body, right through the door of life and into death's mystery and then back again. What is Jesus risen? Who is Jesus risen? Just the same? Surely not. And most important for me, where is Jesus risen? In the chapel, we sing the Easter hymns with their notes scaling up like fireworks to shower down from heights of joy. We settle in our pews to hear the reader. She finds her place in the 24th chapter of Luke's Gospel, tells us she's reading from the NIV and she sets off. The words, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, he has risen. 
find their way into me. He is not here. It feels as though I'm back to the beginning again. This is my whole problem. How to escape from the map of life that nails me uncompromisingly with its you are here to where I am when he has gone somewhere else. I need a new map with you too are somewhere else written on it. If I am here and he is not, how can I find him? Before, I knew at least where to search because I know what wilderness is. Like Br'er Rabbit, I was born in the briar patch. I wander nonchalantly through the landscapes of confusion, inadequacy, depression and grief. The wilderness has been my home since forever. But I tell you frankly, and I hope you will not be disappointed, I do not know how to rise. The service goes on around me and I ponder this. I am familiar with the Gospels, I know what they say. They are written for and from budding faith communities and they train the eye to focus on the new. When Luke writes, why do you look for the living among the dead? He redirects our gaze from the world of religious tradition to the new community breaking open among them. When John shows us Thomas present or not present among the gathering of the faithful and meeting Jesus there when he troubles himself to show up, he is pointing us to the risen Jesus found in the community of faith. But this is an extrovert's gospel. What is there for the cats that walk alone? Bluntly, where am I going to find him? I leave the church with my heart as cold as a stone at night rolled across the entrance of a cave. And when I think of this, the music of a whisper starts up inside me, the familiar stirring of incredulous, half-believing joy. Roll away the stone, be where life is. The kingdom of God is within you. Stop blocking it. And I see where I was going wrong. The life and death and rising of Jesus belongs in one aspect to history. And to that extent it is outside me. But because I too am part of history, the story lives also in me. I allow the stone to roll away. I let life emerge in my soul. Right there on the path, I stop and reconnect with the living. Above me, the pageant of cloud ships. Around me, the singing of birds. The smell of plants in the rain here in the park, the patterns of tree bark, the sharp green of short spears of new grass, the tossing flight of seagulls against the wild sky, the freshness of the air. I let myself out of the cave of my self-absorbed preoccupations and come out here 
where life is. I can do this. I can leave the deadness of self behind and come out into life. And here, in the joy of really seeing, really being, I can touch him again because Jesus is alive.